Welcome to our lecture online and here's another example of how to find the maximum profit by manufacturing something. What we're going to manufacture is two models of, oh I didn't have that down, we're going to build workbenches. Yeah, the title says workbenches, so yes, we're going to build workbenches. There are two models, model A and model B. Model A requires three pounds of steel and six minutes of labor. Model B requires four pounds of steel and three minutes of labor, and there are some constraints. The constraints are that we only have a thousand pounds of steel to use every day, and we only have 20 hours of labor to spend on building these benches, which is 1,200 minutes of labor. And the profit we can make is $2 for each unit of A and $1.50 for each unit of B, and we want to find out how many of each bench we should make, of each model, to maximize the profit. So the first thing we want to do is define the variables. In this case, since we have two models, we'll let x equal the number of model A we're going to produce and y equal the number of model B we're going to produce. Next, we need to determine what we're going to maximize. In this case, what we're going to maximize is the profit, so we write down profit. Of course, later on, we're going to show you some examples of how to minimize something, like minimize the cost, and of course, then we have to realize what, whether or not we're maximizing or minimizing something. Next, we also need to define the objective function, the function that will determine how much profit we're going to make. And since we're going to make $2 of profit for each model of a, unit of model A and $1.50 for each unit of model B, and X represents the number of model A we're going to produce and Y represents the number of the model B we're going to produce, we can then say that the profit is going to be equal to $2 for each unit of X times X, which represents how many of X we're going to build, plus 1.5 times y. All right, now what are the constraints? Well, we have only a thousand pounds of steel and we need to use three pounds for each unit of A and four pounds of each unit of B, which means that three times x plus four times y must be less than or equal to a thousand because that's all the steel that we have each day to use. 3 is the number of pounds for each unit of x, 4 is the number of pounds for each unit of y. So that's the first constraint. The second constraint is labor. So we need 6 minutes for A and 3 minutes for B. So 6 times x plus 3 times y must be less than or equal to the total number of minutes of labor that we have available. So those will constrain us. Now we want to turn those constraints that are in inequalities into equations by using slack variables. So we can write that 3x plus 4y plus our first like variable equals 1000 and we can write that 6x plus 3y plus a second slack variable equals 1200. So those two equations will now go into our augmented matrix. We need one more equation which comes out of our objective function. We move everything over to the left side. We can write the objective function as follows. Minus 2x minus 1.5y plus p equals 0. So this will also need to go into our augmented matrix, which then allows us to find the amount of X and Y, or the amount of A and B that we're trying to produce to make maximum profit. So the augmented matrix will look like this. So we have the variables X, Y, our first slack variable, our second slack variable profit, and then we're going to augment it with the numbers on the right side of the equal sign for each of the three equations. Using our first equation right there, we use the coefficients. That is 3 for x, 4 for y, 1 for the first like variable, 0 for the second like variable, 0 for the profit, and the number on the right side equals sign is 1,000. For the second equation, we get 6, 3, 0 for the first like variable, 1 for the second like variable, 0 for the profit, and the number on the right side equals sign is 1,200. Then we draw a line here, and now we put the objective function down. We get minus 2, minus 1.5, 0, 0, 1 for the profit, and 0 for the amount of profit we're going to make with our what we call the basic solution. The basic solution says, because we don't have 1s and zeros under the x and the y column, we can say that x equals 0, y equals 0, our first slag variable, s1, will be equal to 1,000, our second slag variable will be equal to 1,200, and the profit will be equal to, a, to 0. So you can see here that we have all 1s and zeros here, 1, so 1 times S1 equals 1,000, 1 times S2 equals 1,200, 1 times the profit equals 0, and of course, 0 profit is going to be made because we're not making any of either model A or B. That's our basic solution. 
So now we want to find the pivot point so we can start eliminating some of these numbers and start solving for x and y. We start with the largest negative number, so that's the column we're going to start in, and depending upon what the smallest ratio is, we're going to pick a number, either 3 or 6, to start pivoting around it. So if we divide 1,000 divided by 3, so 1,000 divided by 3, you take this number divided by this number, and we get 333. We take 1,200 divided by 6, and we get, that gives us 200, 200. So that's the smallest ratio, which means we're going to pivot around this number right here, which means we need to make that number into a 1. We take the second row, therefore, and multiply it times 1 sixth and put it back. All right, when we do that, we get the following matrix. Row 1 doesn't change. 3, 4, 1, 0, 0, and 1,000. Row 3 doesn't change, which is minus 2, minus 1.5, 0, 0, 1, and 0. But the second row, dividing that by 6, we get 1, 1 half, 0, 1 sixth, 0, and 1,200 divided by 6 gives us 200. All right, so now we have the 1 to pivot around, and now that allows us to get rid of the 3 and allows us to get rid of the negative 2. We do that by taking the first row and replacing it by the negative of this number, negative 3, times the row with the 1 in it, which is R2, and adding it to the first row. We take the third row, and we eliminate the negative 2 by taking the negative of that number, which is a positive 2, times the row with the 1 in it, which is R2, and adding it to R3, which of course will change row 1 and row 3 into this new matrix. So the new matrix will look as follows. So the second row doesn't change. It'll stay as a 1, a 1 half, a 0, a 1 sixth, a 0, and a 200. The first row, however, will change. Negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Added to 3 gives me 0. Negative 3 times a half is negative 1 half. Added to 4, that's a positive 2 and a half, so 2.5. Nothing changes here. So negative 3 times a 1 6 is negative 3 6, so it's negative 1 half. Added to 0 is negative 1 half. Nothing changes here. And negative Negative 3 times 200 is negative 600. Added to 1,000 gives me 400. Draw a line here. Now we take care of the bottom row. 2 times 1 is 2 added to 2 gives me 0. 2 times a half gives me 1 added to negative 1 half gives me minus 0 0.5 or minus 1 half. Nothing changes here because uh, that's uh, 2 times 0. No, nothing changes here. 2 times 1 6 is 1 third, added to 0 is 1 third. This stays as a 1. And finally, 2 times 200 is 400, added to 0 gives me 400. So now I have an intermediate solution. My intermediate solution is, since this is the x column, the y column, the first like variable, the second like variable, and the profit, you can see that 1x equals 200, so x equals 200. y is still 0 because I don't have 1s and zeros there. S1 is equal to 400. S2 is equal to 0 because I don't have zeros and 1s there. And the profit is equal to $400. So my first solution is that if I make 200 of X, and X stands for model A, which means if I make 200 model A, I will make $400 in profit. Zero model B. Hmm. Maybe I can make more profit by continuing because I still have a negative number right here. So I'm going to go ahead and go back into this column and look for a pivot point by looking for the smallest ratio. So 400 divided by 2.5, hmm, that's about 150, somewhere in that neighborhood. Let's see, 400 divided by 2.5 is about 160, right? And 200 divided by 1 half is equal to 400. That means that's the smallest ratio, which means I'm going to pivot around this point. That's how you decide which number you're going to pivot under. You take these numbers right here and divide it by these numbers to see which gives you the lowest ratio. All right, I need to make that number into a 1, which means I need to divide each number in the row by 2.5. So take row 1 and rewrite it as 1 divided by 2.5 times row 1, or simply multiply it times 0 0.4. That's the same as saying... 0.4 times R1. All right, when I do that, I get the following matrix. 
So the first row is going to change, it's going to become 0, 1, 0.4 times 1 will be 0 0.4, 0 0.4 times 0.5 is 0.2, that's a 0, negative 0 0.2, that's a 0, and 0.4 times this gives me 160. All right, the second row doesn't change, that's 1, 1 half, 0, 1 six, 0, and 200, and the bottom row doesn't change, 0, negative 0 0.5, 0, 1 third, 1 and 400. All right, now I have my pivot point, which I will use to get rid of this and to get rid of that. I can do that by taking the second row, R2, and replacing it by the negative of that number, which is a negative 1 half, multiply times a row with the 1 in it, and adding it to R2. I can take the third row, the negative of the number, which is a positive 1 half, multiply times a row with the 1 in it, R1, and adding it to R3. When I do that, I get the following matrix. Notice that the first row doesn't change, so I get 0, 1, 0 0.4, minus 0 0.2, 0, and 160. All right, second row. Negative 1 half times R1, so negative uh, 1 half times this, so nothing changes. Negative 1 half times this added to this gives me 0. Negative 1 half times this is a negative 0.2 added to 0 is negative 0 0.2. Negative 1 half times this is a positive 0.1 added to 1 sixth. Ah, that's 1 sixth plus 0.1. 1 sixth plus 0 0.1. I don't need to know what that is. Here nothing changes. And a negative 1 half times 160 is a minus 180. Uh, it's not minus 180, but minus 80. Added to 200 gives me 120. All right, now I go and take care of my third row. Half times 0, nothing changes. Half times 1 added to this gives me 0. Half times this added to 0 gives me 0 0.2. Half times this added to 1 third gives me 1 third minus 0 0.1. Nothing changes here. And 1 half times this row, that's 100, added to this gives me 500. Now I am done. The reason why I know I'm done is I have no longer any negative numbers here, right, in this region. And that means my profit is 500, and this tells me how much of y and how much of x I have to build. So, my solution tells me that since this is x, this is y, my first like variable, my second like variable, and my profit variable, notice that y equals 160, so y equals 160, x equals 120, and my profit equals 500, and my slack variables are not both zero, which means there's nothing left on the table. I used all of the steel and all of the labor. So this is model A. Oh, nope. Why is model B? Model B. And this here is model A. And this here is the profit in dollars. So $500 of maximum profit. So this tells me that if I make 160 units of Model B and 120 units of Model A, I will make a maximum profit of 500. If you want to check that, you go back to your objective function, where you say that the profit is equal to 2 times x plus 1.5 times y. When we plug in those numbers, 2 times x, x is 120, plus 1.5 times y, which is 160. So 2 times that is 240. 1.5 times this is 240. Whoa, I have 480. Good thing I checked because I have an error here. Where is my error? Oh, oh, okay. I know where I went wrong. Ha, found my error. At the last operation here, it was half times R1 added to R3. A half times 160 is 80 added to 400 is 480. Ah. There's my error. So go back over here. My profit is 480. My profit is 480. And therefore, it checks. Good thing I checked. It's always a good thing to take your final answers, plug them back in the objective function to make sure that the number you come up here is the same as the number you got down here. Since it wasn't the same, I had to go back and realize when I did the operation, I instead of taking the 160 times 1 half, I took the 200 times 1 half, which was the wrong row because I was working on the operation with row 3. So a good example of how to check your answers. And that's how we do that.